Hi, uh, welcome to our presentation on achieving data center simplicity and standardization with a universal rack PDU. I'm Brad Wilson. I'm the vice president of uh, global rack distribution for Vertiv. Uh, we, I was formerly with a company named Geist, and Geist got acquired by Vertiv in early 2018, and we specialize in rack power distribution, PDUs, uh, and, and power distribution in the white space. And I'll let Grant introduce himself. He's my co-speaker. My name is Grant Young. I'm the offering manager for Rack PDUs at Vertiv. Um, I'm in charge of our engineered to, to order program. And so today we're going to talk about uh, universal Rack power distribution units, or what we call UPDUs. Uh, UPDU is really an enterprise-driven solution. Uh, it was first uh, conceptualized and, and brought to market um, in alignment with Microsoft's Project Olympus back in 2016. Uh, Microsoft had introduced um, AC power solutions for open compute, but they were not aligned necessarily with the 12-volt systems that uh, Facebook had had utilized or the 48 volt DC system that Google had utilized. So they still they still rely on AC power distribution, but they take a unique uh, configure a unique unique way of configuration. So we're going to look at those power configurations of some of the applications that have been developed, and then talk about some of the kind of future proofing ways we see the UPDU uh, developing as we go forward. So the the real problem statement for for Microsoft was they had multiple configurations. So if you think of a, 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 for them, a configuration might've been a cabinet full of gear. It might be compute gear for, for main computing, but it could be storage for somewhere else. It could be networking gear somewhere else. And so they're trying to offer all these pre-configured solutions where the rack and stack is built out, stacked up and delivered to the site as a, as a single SKU that, it, that includes everything all cabled up. Well, the problem becomes uh, every place in the world, not every place, but multiple power configurations exist throughout the world. So there's one phase configurations, there's three phase configurations, there's Y and Delta configurations. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, and so each one of these meant that there was a different skew for every power configuration, even though the rest of the gear in the cabinet might be the same. So what this led to was lots of bills and material that they had to manage, and they had to manage all the configurations. They had to manage more inventory, more supply chain, and more engineering change orders. Whenever something changed, they had to change it for every power configuration. So they were really you know, addressing a, a problem and saying, how can we simplify the number of configured SKUs for the integrators to manage? How can we boil that down to one configuration can go any place in the world? Um, compounding the issue of multiple input types is the different types of outlets that are available for IT gear. Um, typically, IT gear consumes single phase power um, from 200 to 240 volt globally. Um, C19s typically power um, large power supplies, blades, large core switches, et cetera. Those are rated to 20 amps in the US and 16 amp globally that is depicted on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen would be something powered by a C13 for smaller power supplies, uh, small network gear, one use sleds. That's rated to 15 amps in the US and 10 amps globally. Um, US ratings are typically a little higher due to 120 volt consumption possibility, but uh, the global ratings typically drive IT gear and uh, typically consume the 200 to 240 volt AC power. So we'll look a little bit at some of the, the power systems that exist in the world, just to give a little more background for people that aren't as maybe versed in power as, as people that, that live in it every day. So in a Y system, in a Y system, a 240 slash 415 Y, or sometimes known as a, as a, as a five wire system, uh, or a, you see it referred to as a four pole five wire or a three pole plus neutral plus earth. Uh, each, the, the, the power fed out of these systems 
at, at the IT load is still single phase, but they come into the rack or into the cabinet as three phase power. So you typically see a three leg system, line one, line two, and line three, uh, and a neutral in these systems and always a safety ground. So the power, the single phase power is sourced from the line to the neutral, from the line to the neutral, line to the neutral to get the three single phase feeds. This is very typical in Europe. It's gaining a lot more adoption in the United States now, especially by first by the large, large enterprise users like a Microsoft. And now you see it filtering down into a lot more of the new builds because it, it saves on copper and electrical infrastructure to use the higher voltage system. Uh, in, in a 32 amp Y system, for example, we can get about 23 kilowatts out of, out of a 32 amp feed. Uh, now, best practice, that's degraded to about 18.4 kilowatts. And in 30 amp in the U.S., the U.S. application is 30 instead of 32 amps. It will yield about 21.6 kilowatts, but still derated, that's about 17 kilowatts. So we're talking about, about 17 to 18 kilowatts of available usable power in the rack with, with a reasonable amount of overhead. Um, and one other note on these, there is a neutral in here and you think, how can I have three lines and only one neutral? But because of the way three phase is, is distributed and, and each phase is 120 degrees out of, out of phase with the next phase, uh, the neutral currents tend to cancel each other out. So even if there is some harmonic current, it does not exceed the, the current carrying capacity of that wire. Now, the, this is a, a slide that depicts a 208 volt delta system. And this is a, uh, the system that's more heavily used in the United States. Uh, again, like I said, the Y system is, is usurping it in some instances, but generally speaking of, of 208 volt delta, instead of uh, the power going against the neutral, the power goes line to line. Um, so what happens here, this, this is known as a three pole four wire system or a three pole plus protective or the single phase power is, con is, is consumed by, by sourcing from each of two phases. So you have a one to two, a line two to three, and a line three to one. Uh, we get single phase feeds at 208 volts. This is typical of the United States. Also, uh, much of North America, some of South America, and Japan uses a similar system, only the voltage is 200 instead of 208. So the, the 50 amp, which is kind of the, the typical size that we've seen, especially at Microsoft, a 50 amp system uh, will yield about 17.3 kilowatts, but still with, with best practice derating to about 14 kilowatts, not quite as high as the 32 amp. And what happens here is you use a lot more copper to achieve that 14 kilowatts. And this is the Project Olympus PDU developed for, uh, for Microsoft. Uh, this PDU supports multiple cable, uh, input power configurations using a universal cable assembly. The cable assembly or facility side cable will support multiple uh, local power feeds. So the 30, 32 amp Y that Brad discussed, the 50 amp Delta, uh, 30 amp three phase Delta, we even support single phase facility side cables and country specific like Australia or Japan specific cables. Now to achieve this, we use two pole over current protection shown on the image on the right. And this makes it so we can protect circuits in Y or Delta configurations. This PDU was launched with 18 C13 outlets in a 2U configuration. So to, to dive a little bit more into what we saw in that last slide where these multiple different facility cables or power cables can feed that, uh, that PDU, we look back at, at, again, what we're always doing, we're always distributing single phase power out of those C13 outlets, even though three phase power is coming in to the outlets. So with that, the, 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 that input connector that we saw had seven conductors on it. Well, if at one end of the cable, we have five conductors or four conductors in a delta or three conductors in a single phase application. 
we have to kind of magically make that turn into seven conductors. So what happens in there is you can see that uh, on, on the first instance here, the far left, where we've got a 32 amp uh, Y input, we're taking that neutral, and we want that neutral to be sourced against every pair. So we take that neutral and we splice it and we split it into three different neutrals so that it can occupy three of the pins on that seven pin connector. The other three are, are comprised by the phase conductors here represented as W, X, and Y. In a delta situation, uh, as in the middle and the, the left instance, we you, we have to take each of those phase conductors and we have to split them so that W shows up in two places, X shows up in two places, and Y shows up in two places. And it's done in such a way that if you look across, you'll always see that there's a, a, up to 250 volt pair of conductors that are created. So in, in the left instance, that's gonna be actually 240 volts. In the center and right instance, that's gonna be 208 volts for US deployment or 200 volts, for instance, for a, for a Japan deployment. But each of these pairs is capable of up to 250 volts. Protective Earth is, the, this, of course, the constant across all of them, so there's always a ground. Um, so, so this is the way the facility side cables handle converting the various three phase feed or even single phase feeds into three each single phase feeds that go into the power distribution unit. So we've, we've shown how we've solved for multiple input power configurations, but we still have the issue of different deployments having different types of IT gear and needing different socket configurations. In configuration A, you have more small devices, so you would need 12 C13s, 6 C19s to power the gear in that cabinet. Configuration B, you have some, some larger gear in the bottom, so you would only need six C13s, but 12 C19s. And in the past, the way we've solved for this is making one unit with 24 outlets to provide both the 12 C13s needed in configuration A and the 12 C19s needed in configuration B. So those needs have proliferated the, the different designs to multiple IT configurations. So the original version had 18 C13s. And since then, we've been producing more models and more models. So the bottom model being a 2U with 18 locking C13s, middle being 2U with 15 C13s and three C19s, the top being 2U with six C13s, 12 C19s, and an even zero U configuration that has 60 C13s and six C19s. So this, the skew sprawl that was existing because of the input power cords still exists based on the type of deployment and the server power requirements in the deployment. Other configurations um, make this sprawl even larger in terms of uh, changes in intelligence and uh, additional receptacle requirements, um, things like input monitoring, output, outlet monitoring, and control. So as we look at that sprawl, even though we've solved for a single input power or a single way to have a single PDU that can be used globally, that sprawl still leads us to multiple configurations. So the next step in this evolution is how can we get this down to, how can we take away that sprawl that still exists because of multiple C13s and multiple C19s? So as we look at this, we said, well, the, the, the logical solution here is to find one receptacle that will work globally or will work with either one of these configurations. So if you think about a C13 and a C19, if you can find a way to make them fit in the same footprint, yet still be, um, be able to have a, a, a good fit, a locking fit or a tight fit within the plug and receptacle, you could reduce that skew sprawl even further. And so you know, the idea of reducing that skew sprawl is, of course, you know, the ultimate goal where we can have one PDU truly that can, that can have a global application. 
a new concept for the Project Olympus UPDU would be a universal input and universal output. The inlet on the bottom shows the universal input, allowing it to work with the facility side cables already developed for the project. And the universal outlet shown on the top increases the density in 2U from 18 outlets to 24 outlets. And each of those 24 outlets is compatible with a C14 or a C20 power cord, making work in all IT configurations. Um, Additionally, the Vertive Geist Universal PDU is a step further in that thinking. It has the modular input connection to adapt to global power configurations. It features upgradable technology in the form of our input um, monitoring card or power monitoring card that allows us to span from a basic to an enhanced power monitoring system in one PDU. And then it has the new outlet, the combination C13, C19 outlet for increased modularity. In this image, it shows a color code, the outlets are color coded to align with overcurrent protection and simplify deployments for techs in a data center. They're compatible with P-Lock power cables and phased balance to allow for easy load, uh, easy setup and load balancing. More specific information is available on vertive.com about this PDU. Uh, to learn more about Vertive's um, submission or Microsoft's Project Olympus submission, you can go to uh, GitHub for Project Olympus and uh, go to vertive.com. So with that, I would like to thank you for attending. Hopefully we've uh, created a little a little enticement, a little thought about how we can take a, a PDU and, and make it more universal, uh, simplify deployments at global scale, simplify supply chain issues, uh, lower overall inventory, and, uh, and, and lower engineering work in, and sustaining work in, in managing multiple configurations globally. I uh, wish you'd all be safe during this very uncertain time and hope to see you all in person next year at the OCP Summit. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, looks like we just have one question that's come in here. The question uh, in five wire 415, the line to neutral is 250, how is 415 calculated? Actually, the, the line to neutral on, on a 415 is 240. So two, 250 is the maximum capacity. Essentially, when you get into C13, C19s, they're rated up to 250. Um, but the, the voltage systems typically 240 slash 415 and 240 times the square root of three is 415. Some of the older European systems are 230 volt. Um, so 230, you'll see sometimes referred to, uh, or 240, 415. Hopefully that answers the questions. Um, I don't see anything else in chat. So thanks everybody for showing up um, and uh, be safe, have a good day.